hello <laughs> it is i wink <laughs> no weird noises as far as you can tell that's good thank you for the feedback uh yeah let's go to the uh, the actual tab and zoom in once because i'm blind it is time for more homestuck and oh my god we're really closing in on the finale <laughs> which is yeah gotta keep cool gotta keep as cool as uh this guy is not <laughs> at the moment <laughs> yeah it was a good conversation even though it wasn't really a conversation yet well we'll see if they will like fucking get their shit together and finally talk either way uh one short stream today i will definitely finish these conversations and probably go for a little bit longer depending on what you guys say but then on either next saturday or the saturday after i will have to check i said next saturday last time but the thing is i do not know my shift yet this week so i will have to i uh, have my first day on wednesday when i uh have my when i go into my work i will have to check my shift and it's either going to be this saturday or next saturday when we officially finish homestuck on my channel at least <laughs> which is so weird to think about i know i keep repeating myself but it, it's been a thing that i've been doing since last year october and yeah I, i've been like on and off uh with my regularity of streams since then but it has been a thing that i've been continuously doing and i know that it's not over once it's like done there's still so much more but it's still a weird feeling <laughs> to actually you know have read homestuck at this point then you know i will have to get there first last time we had a very long stream i checked it it was like four and a half hours which is crazy long and a lot has happened obviously the games will never stop yeah <laughs> i mean obviously we will have to uh, i mean i'm glad that there's apparently a new uh teaser for hype swap uh part three so that is good that it will uh <laughs> The games, well, no, we're still at the games. <laughs> yeah, um, that this is like going to continue. I know that Friend Sim is also like updated every now and then. Uh, at least I heard so from my friend. I could be wrong, but yeah, it's there's still a lot of content even once Homestuck is done. But yeah, uh, as I said last time, a lot has happened. A lot of conversations. It was a fun stream. I really liked last stream. Um. Let's, let's, without further ado, let's just continue. <laughs> Friends, it was just in 2018. Ah, okay. So Dave, is, Dave just died, and Dirk is, I guess, checking up on his corpse. Oh yeah, they were talking about all kinds of stuff. Uh, Tracy, John Space, <laughs> the matriarch. Oh yeah, then Mina was uh, swimming, uh, thinking about swimming with dolphins. Released in parts over the course of 2018. Yeah, but dot 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 friend sim too. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. If there's like a friend sim too. Anyway, let's continue. We have these nerds. Or no, wait, I need to click this. I forgot. <laughs> I was psyched once again. It's a fun game called Friends Sim 2 that just updated or just released a trailer for an update or something. <laughs> Get these nerds. <laughs> Okay, let's let's start. What do you think they were talking about over there? I suspect Roxy wanted some time to catch up with an old friend. I'm sure I would want the same if I hadn't just had an extensive reunion with her myself. Yeah, I guess we could should just chill out and give them a moment. It isn't quite time to head to our battle stations yet, so we might as well try to relax until it is. I, uh, I imagine it's a lot easier to relax when another version of yourself hasn't been hijacked. Oh no, it's not Roxy, it's Rose. I imagine it's a lot easier to relax when another version of yourself hasn't been hijacked by your dead cat. I'm sorry, my brain is super fried from the heat today. I'm gonna try. Okay, wake up. <laughs> I need to wake up for the stream. Okay. I imagine it's a lot easier to relax when another version of yourself hasn't been hijacked by your dead cat. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably is. Maybe you should try to not let her bug you, Rose. She seems harmless enough. Plus, she's pretty funny. Sounds suspiciously like the advice of someone who's never had to deal with an outlandish alternate version of himself. Hey, I've bumped into other shots a few times. Can't say the experience has been anything other than perfectly agreeable. 
You mean chance that various sanity time duplicates in the course of your retcon quest? Yes. Those don't count. Those were just regular Johns. What I'm saying is, you never had to deal with the John who was like half Harry Anderson and half Maple Hoof the Dear Departed Pony. Wow, that sounds great. Come to think of it, you're the only one of us who hasn't. I mean, of our original group of friends. They've had Bird Dave, Jade had Dog Jade, and now I have... <laughs> Catros. <laughs> Why are you even let off the hook? I don't know. Guess you guys are just luckier than me, smile. Even putting aside the wildly unwelcome body horror slapstick routine she represents in a machine gun salvo of appropriate remarks and conduct which my cat is apparently capable of releasing from my sub subconscious, I'm not sure where this leaves me. What do you mean? I felt like I understood my place. I'd forgotten myself in order somewhat. My, um... Beverage decisions had gotten more reasonable. I was ready to bear down and play my part in finishing this. I could even handle a stray roast ride brought to my doorstep by my sweet imbecile of pet. Idiotic though that was, I was still clearly Rose Prime. But can I really claim, claim that now? She's a sprite squared? How's that even a thing? Can someone tell me how that's even a thing? I can't tell you how it's even a thing. I think we all are all just as flabbergasted as you at its thinginess. What's next? Is there a sprite cubed? Or, uh, let's not even entertain this ever new thought. The point is, she must be quite powerful, insightful, and in spite of the beast, she runs headspace out to intelligent as well. Doesn't she arguably have more claim to being real Rose than I do? <laughs> thinginess, yeah. <laughs> I don't think being the real Rose necessarily beats being the one who is more outgoing and chatty, powerful and stuff. I don't sure it means anything. I think maybe we should try to drop the- Oh my god. No. Phone, I'm not talking to you. No! Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! My phone thought I was talking to it. Have a burp session, but you just smash all the sprites together into the ultimate sprite. Holy shit. Is that even possible? Can you, like- I mean, wouldn't you have to, like, throw them all at once at each other? Like, have them, like- all kind of smash into each other just a boom. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, intelligence. She was uh, talking shit about the intelligence of a cat. Doesn't she arguably have more claim to being real rose than I do? Each sprite can be prototyped twice. Yeah, first time and then second time. I mean, the first time they clearly like were uh, prototyped with like the dead rose and slash dead. Uh, Jasper, wait, wasn't Jasper Sprite already like prototyped twice? Wasn't it like um the 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 the, the octopus uh, princess thingy? I imagine something like the scene where PFP and FFP are like, oh yeah, Rose Sprite wasn't. Yeah, that's true. So okay, so as long as like the the new sprite has been has not been prototyped yet you can't just add to it with other finished sprites huh okay <laughs> i mean that <laughs> that um like open some um options <laughs> that is that is very true hmm. ultimate sprite is a possibility huh now that i think about it, it's a time trying pi duplicates for the original sprites oh yeah they they kind of were huh Okay, doesn't she arguably have more claim to being real rose than I do? I've read this three times now. I don't think being the real rose is necessarily beats being the one who is more outgoing and chatty powerful and stuff. I don't sure beats anything. I think maybe we should try to drop the stuff about who is the real version of who anyway. It's weird that just hurts people's feelings. I don't care if my feelings are hurt though. I just want to know where I stand. I really don't think she's that threatening to you. Believe me, you still stick like the rose I always do. Whereas she doesn't quite. Seems to me she is a lot more interested in having fun and sitting around like a silly lunatic than usurping you as the main rose. Sure, that's what she wants you to think. But why do you care? I thought I heard the yellow rose say before she was a cat that she liked the idea of being some sort of backup rose. And not the other way too. That was a different context. I probably would have felt the same way if I found myself in her exact situation. 
Chas Bros changes everything, though. <laughs> Chas Bros, <laughs> okay. That, now I feel a certain responsibility, like I have to really step up. Step up? Yes, to make sure I stay regarded as, as the ex exemplary model. To provide assurance that the concept of roseness itself doesn't degrade due to black like, market peddlers of substandard shit. Basically, I need to defend the integrity of the brand. <laughs> uh, oh, my, <laughs> oh my god. What? Nothing. I, I just missed you so much. <laughs> John is so sweet, honestly. <laughs> My brand missed you too, John. Your brand has good taste in friends. It kicks ass. <laughs> is a rose by any other name still as revel uh, relevant, huh? <laughs> Nerds! <laughs> Tracy. Hey, how, how do you think Kadaya and Karkid are doing? They're probably getting a stern earful of roiling monster patoy right about now. Patois, but patoy? Patoy! Do you think they'll be successful? Dot dot dot. And what? Uh, talking to a monster? Yeah, French. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I think Carcat will successfully fail to understand the monster and possibly also successfully shout at the monster. Kanaya, I, I think, will probably successfully do something sensible in response to whatever the monster demands. So, you think they're gonna pull it off then? I'm still not sure what it is, but yes. Well, the idea was to release the frog, I think. You think so? That's what Riska said. Riska says a lot of things. That's the basic idea, yes. But monsters can be complicated. Regardless, I think the right person was summoned to handle it. You really trust Kadaya, don't you? Sure. Not to change the subject too hard or something, baby, you don't want to talk about because of your friend. But I think you make a nice couple. You do? Yes, I thought the last time I was hanging out with you both in the screwed up timeline, but didn't say anything then. I, I think it's still true. I, I'm glad I didn't change, well, it didn't change when I read, it didn't change when I read, I read code some things. Oh my god, I can't talk. I am too. Maybe that leads to a strong relationship, if it gets the right. God, whatever the hell happened, a hard three year reboot and then sudden presence of Riska. Hey there, Piscean, welcome. You didn't miss much. I just started the conversation between uh, these nerds. <laughs> and basically just went one like through one page already. So you really didn't miss much. When you put it that way, it really does sound like you were trying to fuck us up. Uh huh. Nerds. Yeah, Rose freaking out about about Chas Bros. Teresi shush. What? I've just been minding my own business, and in no way would I ever saying anything directed at a couple of silly nerds saying dorky things. No, you said nerds twice. You always say nerds when it earshot of other people who are just being friendly. Isn't it weird how you're making this observation and no one else is? What? No. Meaning, maybe I only say, say it when the pair of nerds in your shirt happens to include you. Um. Spade? <laughs> ah, uh, what was that look? What look? That look you, you just gave me. I didn't give you a look, dingus. Yes, you did. Don't look at me like that. Whatever you look, you think I gave you. It was in your imagination. It is possible you may be flattering yourself, Eckbird. Oh, whatever. Hey, what are you even still doing here? Or are you going to go with Dave and get ready for battle? Yes, I'm just giving him and his bro some time to themselves first. I'm sure they could use it, and whatever the hell is going on between them, the last thing I want to do is involve myself. It sounds even more awkward than lingering around you goofy bunch of nerds being all cute and mushy with your human family and friendship stuff. Yeah, you sure do saw the put off by it, all hanging out our every word and such. It, it takes a will of iron, trust me. Uh-huh, but yeah, I actually do agree. It does sound pretty awkward to be around David's bro while they, um, get to know each other, I guess. Yep. I'm not sure how well Dave really even knew his adult bro, actually. Aside from bogusly idolizing him in a way that it was really transparent that he didn't. I wonder, I wonder how different Dirk is from him, if at all. 
I wouldn't be the one to ask. What do you think, Rose? I don't think there's anyone who could answer that. I suspect literally no one in the history of anywhere has ever met both people. Until as of now, Dave himself. Dot dot dot. I hope Dave's okay. <laughs> Dirk's course. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> mm. What are they doing? What? Oh, <laughs> they're talking about them. Me not thinking about a lot of treasure. They're still throwing hands. They're so cute. I guess Roxy's trying to do the Matriarch thing. And they're just like, oh my fucking god, Roxy's so... No, John is just like, oh my fucking god, Ronjo, uh, Roxy's so fucking cute. Oh my god, look at her. She's so adorable. Oh my god. And then we have... A, I, I keep... <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> oh no, Kelly is so cute. Adam Kelly! Wiggle, thingy. Ooh. What? Holy shit. It's like Star Wars. Just the other way around. Backwards Star Wars. <gasps> it's Alternia! Oh. Ancestors. Signless. Scary! Dead, uh, mother job, I guess. Ooh. All these symbols. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Major! Extra signs, yeah. I do see the extra signs. This one looks familiar to me. I'm pretty sure I gave something like that to no <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I wonder if those are wires, huh? There it is! There it is! There's a whole extended zodiac. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> Gasp! <gasps> hell yes, hell yes, hell yes, hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. <laughs> Oh no, it's been a while since we saw an animation like that. She did the thing! Post cannon is encroaching quickly. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Egg. Hell <laughs> oh, yes, hell oh, yes, hell oh, yes, egg. Yeah, I do love the little dance as well. I can just hear a little fan fanfare like uh fan fantasy <laughs> Honestly, Final Fantasy VI is one of the best fanfares. Oh, <laughs> now Dirk is dead. <laughs> it's identical to John's dance from way back in Act 2, yeah. Oh, there's the Kippen one again, I guess. Roxy and Kelly are not there anymore. Oh, thinking about Curlos <laughs> carrying her around, okay? They go, they leave, they fly away. Oh, I, I for a second, for a second, I thought that uh, Chas Bros is flipping them off. It's just like, motherfuckers. <laughs> Carefree victory. Took me way too long to remember that song name, yeah. Nah, there they go. Okay. I will not. I clicked it. Oh, there she is. It's me again! Brr, brr, brr. Cat sounds, cat sounds, stretch! Uh, miss me, Rose? Did you know I love you? We had think for me to say and you to hear, probably. I inherited the adoration our cat had for you, which now strangely is directed with the same ex exact same intensity at myself because I'm you. Funnily enough, this manifests itself in a particularly acute form of narcissism, which is something we are uh, we're already sort of afflicted by. Because cat. And so was our cat by the very nature of the yeah, exactly <laughs> the sort of animal he was. Given the bottom line is I'm pretty twisted up inside in all the most beautiful ways, and it's wonderful. 
It really isn't. Oh. <laughs> the little pinch. Oh shit, see, there's more emotes, Piscean. There's a couple more now. I added a few earlier. As much as I enjoy getting a load of what gorgeous whiskle is maga yours, that gorgeous whiskle is maga yours, it's not actually why I drop by. I'm here in the current matter of business of chain. The ever evolving emo catalog, it took me all. Almost the entirety of Homestuck to actually get this shit done, but <laughs> finally, some more emotes are there, so yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, keep it. <laughs> huh? You have to prepare for our healing duties. Have out a strategy in such releasing our claws into the expensive upholstery of the problem. But first, I have somewhere to take you. What? what where? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that is the animation of uh, Jane and Roxy in uh, Unite Synchronization. Yeah, the carcad face is one of my favorite carcad faces. I had to add it. There is, uh, wait. We have John Wave, we have the carcad, and we have these two, uh, wing faces. There's something I really must need before you all start skittering her across the great laminated floor of combat. As the ghostly spirituals guide of whomever my whims decide, I should be serving any given moment a candle on another second to pass without introducing the two of you. Who? This way. And then change just goes like, ah! <laughs> just less, you know, ah! and more like, ah! Huh. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeet. Just goes like, boom. <laughs> Full force. I love that. I love the fucking, like, physics of that just yeeting around. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah, that's Chains Planet and the Denizen, yeah. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. <laughs> I love the underside of the shoes. That's literally my favorite color. Oh, shit. It's queen. It's queen. <laughs> oh, Nana. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, Dirk is still dead. Dave decides to just fuck off, I guess. They're just like, spades everyone. <laughs> well, yeah, spades to raise each other and spades to raise Rose, uh, chat Rose. Nana! Oh, smooching a statue of herself. They're still throwing hands. Oh, they're gone. Okay. Shit talk, shit talk, shit talk, shit. Shit talk, shit talk, shit talk, shit. Shit talk, shit talk, shit talk, shit. They're going. And then there's these two. You can stay here with the others until it is all blows over. But who exactly? Jay, she's sleeping. Please keep an eye on her, okay? Yes, of course. I'd I'd be happy to. Also, a man that they call the mayor is here. I don't know much about the dude himself, but apparently he's a hell of a guy. Give him my regards. I will. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love these two. So, yeah, if we make it through this, I'll come back for you, and then we figure out what happens next. I can wait. Hope you're not sick of hearing it yet, but I'm still so psyched you're with us. Of course I'm not sick of it. It is just, ugh. Hmm? Kelly, in times such as these, you know, words have trouble cutting it. Come here. Keep me in your thoughts, okay? I'm the luckiest and magicest way you know how. I will, Roxy. Now if you will excuse me. I got a delivery to make. 
They are super cute. I love them. Oh, they're finally sitting together. Wow. Improvement. Rose is having an uh, identity crisis over the spades. Like the black rum show. Uh, shit. Chas bros. And they, um, I guess, have a conversation about that entire thing. Thinking about a uh, yacht and uh, more dolphins, I guess. Still throwing hands, but they're sitting now. Are they? Or are they just... Hmm. I think they're sitting now. I think they, they sat down to throw hands. How did not uh, imply, show the implied smooch? I uh, I mean, it might be the fact that I'm uh, a slash arrow as fuck. Uh, I understood it as a hug. But yeah. They're still gone. Oh shit. <laughs> Rose, what the fuck? Rose is literally thinking about killing her cat again. Rox is going. There's this one. Oh. Callie meeting the mayor. She's so happy. Yeah, she's happy about thinking about killing her cat again. Okay, back to these two. Maybe we should go over this again. Because honestly, I'm still not sure I get it. What? Who we... Are we actually fighting again? Jack Noir? That Calliope pick? This one? <laughs> it's so cute. It's Liz smile. She's like, Liz smile. <laughs> Oh, which one? Which one do you mean? I don't think she's menacing, but yeah. <laughs> it's most oh yeah, the shadow, yeah, okay, if you like consider the shadow, yeah, that does... It really depends on the context, because we have the context that she's about to meet the mayor, it's just like, oh yeah, oh shit, it's cute, but if you like see this picture out of context, you're just like, oh shit, mayor's in danger. Could have either been a smooch or a hug, either way, how dare they not show it? <laughs> I mean, obviously for shipping reasons. That That is the smartest thing to do to not ruin it for shippers, you know? <laughs> so, I guess it's smart. Your mayor's in digging chair. Meeting a friendly school monster. I know. Oh, no. Okay, uh, maybe I should go over this again, because honestly, I'm still not sure I get it. What? Who are we actually fighting again? Jack Noir? Yeah, well, one version of Noir. There's a shitload of them, though. Which one is it? Is this? He's yours. Ours? Yeah, the one from your session. But our Jack spent months in prison. Well, I guess he broke out. He's kind of like a huge fucking deal now. When did this happen? I have no idea. I wasn't there. Or here. Or ever anywhere. <laughs> I guess neither was I. He's got Lord English powers, though. He's apparently, like, just wretched fucking news. Damn. It's going to be hard to beat, even armed with the ultimate weapon of some sort. Turkey killed you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sounds like some shit is going down. Let's not downplay our sword gambit, though. I have yet to encounter a problem where a sword didn't factor into the solution, at least in some way. I bet. Bear in mind, I haven't actually solved many problems over the course of my life. But the ones I have, man, swords proved hells of instrumental. What do you mean you didn't solve many problems? Didn't you, like, program robots and stuff? I guess I meant real problems involving people. Oh, those. Yeah, Dirk was killed by Conti. I was, like, thinking about it, but... That wasn't... Yeah, it was the Condes, right? So Jack has Lord English powers. Yep. Does that have anything to do with Jake? Not according to my current understanding of a mostly nonsensical body of information. Hmm. What does it actually mean then? Not sure. Mostly that he's really hard to kill, I think. Okay, well, that's decent intel at least. He might be vulnerable to Lush thanks to, don't quote me on that, because it will make me sound like an idiot. Alright. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Awkward beans! Do you know when he arrives? I already said I don't know. Right. Guesstimate? Um, not soon enough is my best guess. And I guess also my opinion. Oh. <laughs> Go 
god. <laughs> These two. They're killing me. No. <sighs> yeah, that was from a time that my Ukraine's mood went down, so aren't just the same way. Even though it still doesn't entirely add up. I mean, it, they, they let things happen kind of the same way up until, like, um, like, Shade and Chain were taken over, to my understanding. So that entire thing with the explosions and of the Prospect and Durst still happened, to my understanding. It's just that Riska was there to KO uh, Chain and Jade. So they would not, con the Condess would not have control over them. Riska went back and changed stuff before that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, yes, she said she was like doing some shenanigans. Man, Homestuck. Is everything alright? Sure. It just seems like maybe you aren't that into this or at least not as much as i was whenever i imagined the possibility of us e of me of us meeting she prevented gansy from doing stuff he did before but what is that stuff though <laughs> because gansy did a lot of meddling Because uh, a lot of stuff that Gamty also did, like, involves um, Caliborn, from my understanding. This timeline he's locked in a fridge, but yeah, the, the other trolls are still dead. So there's not that much that has changed. And yeah, a lot of the stuff that he did, as I said, involves Caliborn, so what happened to that stuff? Was the one who gave little Cal to CD? Stuff hasn't happened yet with Gamsey and Caliborn. Yeah, but everything that already happened, like, that hasn't happened yet, still didn't happen already! It it's like a paradox. <laughs> Fucking paradoxes, I hate them. We see these under to Jack, which is how Jack got the, those wacky powers, yeah. Hmm. Shenanigans, paradoxes. <laughs> okay, sorry for grabbing the noise. <laughs> I usually don't. I usually don't let those out too much. <laughs> oh god! The only thing I can possibly think of to explain this, and now I'm curious. Let me let me take a sippy sip of my wawa. Is that Riska sent little Cal to check? <sighs> but I mean, that sounds like a theory, a game theory. <laughs> Cause she's fucking risk. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I I will think about all that stuff later when I have like all the information that the canon gives me, and then I will sort that out. I guess. As a history of creating horrible bad guys, checks in particular. Yeah, yeah, that's true. She did create, like, uh. The, the, the dog one for sure <laughs> either way uh, as i said i will contemplate all this when i am uh, back noir when i have all the information that canon gives me so, okay because she's better trademark now she, she's not really she's just a different kind of risk huh? we we talked about that before but yeah better <laughs> she's still binska just just saying, but yeah. Sure, it just seems like maybe you aren't that into this, or at least not as much as I was whenever I imagined the possibility of us meeting. Were you? Yeah, I guess I'm not doing a very good job of showing it now. I think that's probably just what I'm like, though. You don't say. I mean, when it comes to people in general, but probably especially people who are as an, an important part of my life. So, you think I'm an important part of your life? I... Yes? You don't actually know me, though. Not this me, and I'm pretty sure you didn't know the other guy either. That's true. What is it about me that's important, then? I'm not sure how to answer. Why? Because I'm getting the sense that you might disapprove of whatever I might say. 
I really think it's weird that I idolized some version of you that I never knew. Idolized? See, it seems like you think it's weird. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. I don't know if it's weird, I just can't process it. Why? Because maybe not anything to do with you, per se, but... How I view my bro, and I've gotta say, meeting you... It's not rocking the world here, or uh, depending on any paradig paradigms or whatever. Listening to you and looking at you, it really, really just reminds me of him. I know you're different and all, and also like a kid, I guess. But I don't feel that different, and hearing anything like that, like about idolization, or like you were actually looking forward to this in any sincere way, it's kind of fucking charring. Huh. So like, things between you and me from your perspective on, are we like, not cool? Many dots. Dave is working through some shit, I think. <laughs> well? Well, here's why I, I guess I didn't fucking like you that much, okay? Oh. Why not? Honestly, I don't know if I wanna, if I wanna get into it. Okay. All Turks are basically just Turkey. <laughs> also, Dave admitting that he actually didn't really like his bro that much, which makes absolute sense because I guess the Dirk from the start, from uh, how we also met bro, was just very quiet and always so focused on fighting and training and all that shit. Like there, was, there wasn't even food in the fucking fridge for a kid, bro. There, there was just weapons everywhere and he wasn't that great of a brother. It, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's also had an evil puppet influencing him. Hmm. Yeah. So. Oh. Some time passes and it's quiet. And things just don't keep getting more awkward. <clears throat> okay, maybe. Actually, I will get into it. Yeah, good, because I want to know, Jabe. I want to know what's going on in your head. I don't know why my friends got to have adult adults around who cared about them. They complained bitterly about stuff, so I guess I convinced myself they were all in the same boat as me. But that's not how it was. Their complaints were trumped of nonsense and I bought it because, I don't know, I didn't have any frame of reference. But his dad and her mom, no matter what they said, it was so obvious they cared about them deeply. Even Jade's weird fucking grandpa who died when she was young obviously would have done anything for her. Why did I get su such a raw cut of, of the asshole deck? And why did it take me so long to figure that out? And he's like dead now, so that's dead. So all I have to do is look back and try to put the pieces together of my first 13 years. And all I can think is, what the fuck was that? I don't come away with the impression I used to try convincing myself of. That it was like mysterious or stern or aloof. The only thing left is that this insane impression is this insane impression that I was raised by somebody who fucking hated me. And the whole act of even raising a child was some totally fucked up game to him. Like parenthood was one of the the highest tiers of irony in his soul and bullshit bro ninja code. So he went through those motions and did whatever he thought was funny or badass. But under that weird stylistic and totally sociopathic approach to parenting, I can't even imagine there was any emotion toward me other than some Sort of loathing. What did he do? I don't want to get out the laundry list. For reference, laundry wasn't one of those things. That was just one of the many little domestic things I just had to sort of figure out. Sort of like I eventually had to learn what the real purpose of a refrigerator was from movies. Wait, what? I don't know, there's too much to even get into. Just, I don't remember the atmosphere ever not being nerve-wracking. All having to sneak around and ugh, my shitty childhood spider senses are tingling just thinking about it. I was... It was training, you know? But you know what it really was? It was some vicious shit that was bad and sucked and I hated it. it didn't make me stronger. It did the opposite. It made me never want to fight. It made me never want to see blood or be near danger or hear metal sounds. It made me hate the idea of being a hero because he was a hero and he ruined the idea of heroism. I don't even want to be fighting the shitty version of Jack, but hey, nobody else has secret Welsh powers, so I guess I have to. 
da, da, da. What gets me is how long it took me to put all this together. To stop seeing it as some kind of roughhousey and eccentric life I had, but was otherwise normal. It took years to deconstruct it all and put it back together to understand how fucking mad I should be. And in particular, how stone cold, deeply uncared for I was my whole life. Like being merely monitored by a violent robot. I only started getting it after spending a lot of time in prison with a bunch of people who actually did care about me. And it could start feeling like actually somewhat human for the first time instead of some sort of runty afterthought to a household cabal of, sm of smutty puppets. Puppets? The fucking puppets! I know how it sounds, but I'm not joking. There's no shred of doubt in my mind that he loved all those puppets more than me. Honestly, it's very po po very possible that he was just insane and that's that. I guess it didn't help either that we lived what we have come to understand uh, that we live with what we had have come to understand may theoretically be the most evil doll to exist in any universe ever. In fact, it's my tenuous understanding that he came down to earth with that thing and like actually grew up with it, maybe. Maybe spending 30 some years being inseparable from that hell puppet had some effect on him. Maybe if it hadn't been casting a pal over our apartment 24 7 since he took me in, grinning, glaring, loving my sleep, maybe our lives wouldn't have been so quite so. Maybe we would have. Ugh. What? You okay there? Dot 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 Yeah. That doll. That was Cal, right? Yeah. Right. My version is empty, apparently. Whatever that means. Huh. How do you know that? The source. One supposedly knowledgeable in choo -choo's. Never quite knew what that meant, though. Well, whatever his was, empty is never how I would have described it. Hmm. Man, I don't know if I figured something out here, or, like, um, explain something, or if I'm just driving myself crazy for just talking off and even easy explaining. It doesn't change my past or how I feel about him. He was still pretty much awful, no matter what the reason, and I'm sure that's the only feeling I'll ever have about him. So who cares why it was like that? Yeah. That all sounds really bad. I don't know what to say, though. Maybe I shouldn't say anything, since I just remind you so much of him for uh, obvious reasons. I don't want to make you feel worse or make it sound like I'm offering a defense for him or me. Because I don't have one for either of us. Come on, man. You didn't You didn't do anything. This was just some douchebag with your exact DNA who happened to grow up to be my bro. You had a completely different life full of, like, different choices and actions and stuff, and even if you were t gonna turn out like him, you've barely cleared the halfway mark on actually chronologically getting there. In some way, ranting about all this is probably just uncool of me because you aren't him. You're not responsible for any of the shit, but I'm sort of implicitly taking it out on you anyway, so sorry about that. I'm not sure if it's true, though. At least, I don't feel that way. What way? That I'm not him? The fact is, I am. It's something I've come to understand about myself. All splinters of me are basically me, no matter how much I want to resist that truth. Or pretend they aren't reflecting my own qualities back at me. I bear a certain responsibility for all of them. Splinters? Yeah. yeah, I guess the concept isn't that unique to me. We've all got other versions of ourselves running around here and there throughout the various compartments of this messed up cosmos. Right. I just happen to be particularly connected to mine. I felt haunted by them, and what that really means is I'm perpetually haunted by my own bad qualities. So when I hear about stuff I did in another reality, I'm not sure what my adult self might have tried to do to atone for that stuff, if anything. Hey there, Scribbler, welcome! <laughs> welcome to the stream and to day therapy hours. <laughs> I'm just wondering if this applies to Nepita too, if all splinters of her are basically just cat girl. <laughs> Pretty much dick squat. Yeah, but in any case, I'm sure it was completely in the wrong and I'm sorry I messed up your life. Dot dot dot. Been listening to audio only in the car. Okay! <laughs> and you didn't, at, le at least didn't miss much. Thanks, but <clears throat> it's definitely a little odd, odd accepting an apology from somebody who I just met and technically had nothing to do with my life. Even if you do feel gu guilty splinter ways or whatever, it is just a messed up situation. And I guess I had to wend. 
and there was never anyone I wanted to say all that to, and the only thing that was gonna drag it out of me, I guess it was like a teen stand of fandom of my dead bro. Just a perfectly innocent dude having to take the brunt of this shit. I'm not particularly innocent though, I've messed a lot of things up with my friends, honestly, that's why I wasn't that bent on sticking around when I showed up. I pretty much jumped at the offer of flying here to get ready for some yet to be explained battle. Battles are easy. Just you, swords, and bad guys. It's a lot simpler than having to answer for things you did. For the most part, I feel pretty bad about the role I played in my friends' lives. Especially Jake. What happened there? I don't even, even know. An unmitig unmitigated disaster for which I'm entirely to blame. It's not any one thing. I think I was just a completely toxic element in his life from day one. I don't know what he's doing now. I wouldn't be surprised if he was trying to avoid me as much as possible. I'm sure that's for the best. I think I need to stay out of his business for good. Uh, for a good while so I don't risk poisoning another innocent kid's life. Like I did with you, apparently. Yeah, I mean... Maybe it's a little different cause relations between peers is a whole other thing. It's tricky shit and you're both figuring stuff out on a relatively equal footing. And you're both at the same point in your lives. It's not like when one person is older and supposed to be a lot more. Never mind. It's a fucked up thing to think about. This is a fucked up thing to think about. But the bottom line is, yeah, laying low while you sort out your stuff can hurt. Right. The thing with that with my adult self's ways, the sad thing is, I can really see it. How someone like me can go unchecked in life and turn out to become so much much worse person than I already am. I guess I'm just relieved I still have some time to make sure that doesn't happen. You don't actually seem like a bad person to me though. No? Nah. Why not? But it's just me after all. Because I don't know if truly bad people wrestle so much with whether they're good or bad. I think if I ever sensed my bro like struggled at all with what he was doing or who he was or showed any sort of doubt might have changed everything, but there was never a crack in it, or the slightest hint of introspection behind the aggressive Buju facade. If there was, I sure never noticed. I mean, personally, I think about it all the time now, what it actually means to be good or bad, or if not something that's starkly moral. At least just trying to examine the difference between being decent and being a douche. Maybe it's because of him I worry about that now. For me, I think that internal struggle is kind of mild for him. For you, I mean, it sounds like some pretty dark shit. Like grappling with becoming evil versus simply trying not to. Yeah, that's not too far off. But the point is, even just talking to you a little bit, it's obvious you've been fighting with that. Which means that you care enough to put in some effort. I think that counts for something. Maybe. Not sure if I'm ready to accept a pat on the back for recognizing I have some problems or worrying about whether they will destroy me and fuck up the people I care about. I might be setting the bar kind of low. Well, when it comes to the subject of him, the bar is already pretty low, dude. The weird thing, honestly, is that it's actually kind of refreshing to hear our sincerely leveled critique of all my negative qualities. Coming from another person invested in a relationship with me rather than from a fucked up iteration of myself as some bizarre trollish form of self-abuse. The only thing I've ever been exposed to are either various forms of self-loathing either from me or my autoresponder or attitudes completely oblivious to my real issues as expressed through my friends. My friends always seem to cut me so much slack or were just never aware of the kind of person I really was. Well, Jake probably is by now at least, but he's also the sort of guy who's just as likely to blame himself for stuff I did as he is to blame me. Jane and Roxy, though, never seemed to see anything wrong with me. If anything, just the contrary, Roxy in particular had a certain fixation. She meant well, but was so enamored of me and seemingly everything I did, which I think was the last thing I needed, to be idolized in some form by other people I respected. I had enough of that feeling coming from within, particularly when I was younger, and since then I've been plagued by the insane ego of my youth in the form of an artificial intelligence I designed, which essentially trapped its state of mind in sort of hard, suspended animation. Until recent developments, of course. So, was that stuff true? When you said you idolized the other version of me? Yeah. 
And that's just some bullshit, like how I used to say the same thing about my bro when I didn't know any better. Oh, so that's that's what was bothering him. It's definitely not like that. I never lived with him or met him, so couldn't have anything like the contentious relationship you had with my older self. He was a historical figure from centuries ago. There was a lot of, to admire and think about fondly. Especially since I was alone and never had any direct contact with another person or any concept of civilization. So even though I'm sure I romanticized what his life was like and the early 21st century in general, it was nice to think about you. I passed a lot of time that way. You say that was a lot to admire. Like, what? <laughs> so we don't have to have to move. <laughs> Oh yeah, so admirable. Also sorry if I'm not commenting on this conversation just yet. I just think it's so interesting and I really get into like the conversation itself while I'm reading it because like the, the emotions of the characters are so well done in the way how Hasi writes the dialogues. It's just really easy to really get into this emotion <laughs> and just read, you know, so I will probably just, I, like when I'm quiet, it's just because I'm like focusing on the characters and the emotions and like the interpersonal relationship and then we'll comment on it afterwards. <laughs> so yeah, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 a heavy conversation, but also very good. It, it clears up a lot about how they felt this entire fucking time, but yeah. You said it was a lot to admire, like what? Well, he was pretty famous, made some successful movies, at least under a somewhat expansive definition of success. And an even more expansive definition of movie. His work accumulated a lot of subversive political influence, which got him in trouble later. He made like a million bullshit statues of liberty, scumped them up with JPEG artifacts and littered them all over the planet. Holy shit. He was also pretty bad as swordsman and an active member of the resistance movement. He slaughtered a clown president on the roof of the White House and flew away on a shitty skateboard. Then it seems he gave the battle witch a pretty good run for her money. It wasn't enough, but at least he went down fighting. Shitty liberties. <laughs> that... Yeah. Um, I need to hear more details on this sometime. Sure, but as you can tell, clearly there was a lot to look up to. I thought about the examples you said constantly. The creative ideals, the advanced theories and irony and humor, the tales of courage and martial prowess. Really, I modeled everything about myself after you, or at least everything good that I was trying to become. And I probably spent an embarrassing amount of time imagining what it would be like to live during his time and to be able to have something resembling a sibling's relationship or be in some sort of master-apprentice situation. And I finally learned he existed and started to understand who he really was in relation to me that put a lot into context. I realized he was a version of you who got the chance to live up to his full potential. And when I understood there was a young version of you in a situation sort of like mine, whose time on earth got cut short when you were thrown into all this. I was at least happy to think there was some reality where you got the chance to do everything you wanted to do, be successful and fight for all the right things. Even if ultimately it didn't lead to a great outcome for humanity, you had an opportunity to live a full life and show that what you were made of. I guess I had the same opportunity in your world, somewhat less fortunately. Yeah, but then for all my bitching, I guess I still never grasped your full reality. Just like you probably didn't grasp mine, but just braiding into the mindset of a historical figure as best you could. But if I wasn't as heroic as it seemed, what if that old me was kind of douchey too in a way you couldn't observe? Perhaps. But beyond a certain point, I think accomplishments speak for themselves. I don't know if you can just completely shred away, uh, sh shred every person who ever did great things because they had some flaws. All I can say is it was important to me to see him the way I did. As a good person who inspired me and set the standard for what I wanted to be, it kept me going. That said, I'm also glad there's this version of you who got to go through all the things you've been through. Like, yeah, you didn't get to be the cool celebrity who cuts down juggalos on badly defaced government pro property. And the idea of a normal life was really taken from you. And it's something you'll never get to experience, but this is so much more challenging and uncertain. 
You get to apply all the potential you showed in one reality to something much bigger and more existentially critical. Whatever strength you showed in trying to save a dying planet, the fact is I think we need that more here. Or we need it more here. And the try is inherent in being a part of something like this, I think they bring more out of you than a relatively pedestrian life on Earth would. Make you face more things about yourself, at least that's been true for me. But it sounds like it's been true for you too. It sounds to me like the experience you've had changed you a lot for the better. You mentioned the experiences within that were designed to make you stronger have actually made you, weak, make you, made you weaker. But really, I doubt that's true. I bet you've become stronger than you realize, not because of anything he did, but because of what you've done. And the ways you've changed yourself through your own effort. I hope it doesn't come off as overly sentimental garbage, but it seems to me like you turned out to be a really good dude. Like, really, a better sort of dude I ever imagined talking to when I pictured meeting the legendary guy I idolized. I pictured him as probably being too cool to be the type of guy you are. But you know what? Fuck being too cool for that. the thought you you don't think i'm cool nah i mean in the right way yes i think you are but in the way that doesn't mean anything and doesn't matter not particularly da, da, da. anyway that's all my stuff with respect to your other self Again, there's a lot more I could say about him. Maybe stuff you should know, or maybe it's all irrelevant to the path you're on now. Regardless, I'd be more than willing to answer any questions you have about him. Or anything, really. Feel free to ask me whatever, okay? Yeah, I... I'll have to think. <clears throat> hmm? Sorry about this. What? Oh no! <laughs> what I'm doing right- <laughs> What I'm doing now. This bullshit right here. Oh. Well. It's- Oh no! This is making my heart so happy! Ah! Oh no! <laughs> Yes! I was waiting for it! Oh my god, yes! Yes! This is the best thing to ever happen so far! Yes! I feel like such a huge weight just fell off Dave's shoulders. Like, holy shit! This, this conversation was liberating to him, in a way. Oh my god, yes! Hug! The power of hugs! Yes! Oh my god, I, I love this. This is amazing. Oh no! It's really fucked up of me, what I'm presently doing, so sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah, man. This is some fucked up shit, alright. I know. <laughs> I am flailing my hands. I'm happy. Oh no. Oh yes, yes, I'm back. Oh my god, yes, I'm getting better. It's getting better. With every fucking pen, it's getting better. That's cool. Don't worry about it. So fucked up. Yeah, it's so fucked up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize, Dave. It's completely fine to feel emotions. Oh no! <laughs> he just needed a hug from his bro! He needed a hug from his bro! <laughs> ah! It's an ironic sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I feel like this healed parts of me. This conversation, this conversation was healing my soul and this hug just absolutely, the crops, you know, they're watered, the skin is clear, everything is good now. 
<sighs> I'm at peace. <sighs> Let's just linger on this for a moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm thriving. Yeah. <laughs> This conversation was really like therapeutic. There, there was it was heavy. It started out heavy. Yes, yeah, so Strider hugs a free serotonin. I will think of this moment the entire fucking week, and I will be happy. Nothing can ruin my mood for this week. Nothing. <laughs> Not even the work. Not even this fucking hot weather. Dave just finally got a hug from his bro, or gives, gave a hug and got one back, that's so good. <sighs> I'm really happy about this. This is honestly, ah, oh, <laughs> Perfect. <sighs> okay, I need to look at it a little bit longer. I'm still not, I'm still not over it. I need to look at it a bit longer. Also, I mean this in a completely, absolutely no shippy way. I do not ship these two. I just think from like a, a like a character point of view, this conversation was so fucking important to round up Dave's character and to also really kind of like get an insight into what he was struggling with this fucking entire time of the comic. That he never had a guardian, that he never had someone that really like took care of him the same way how a guardian should look like take care of someone. And this, I don't know, this kind of resonates with me as well on a personal level. And so this is, this is a very important conversation to me as well. So yeah, I love this. This, this conversation almost made me cry in some parts. But the hug really makes it feel so much better. Oh. Okay. Okay, just a little longer. Just a little longer. <sighs> very good. Beautiful conversation. Very important for Dave's character and development and arc. <sighs> okay. This was absolutely... Oh no, now they're finally talking about Nurchin! <laughs> Dave's talking about the plush rump shit and the things that Bro did in his time. And then Dirk is talking about all the weird movies and the cool shit Dave's all the self that oh no no they're finally friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, beautiful. Love this. <laughs> Time for the real rap session. Oh my god. <sighs> I'm so happy right now. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm so fucking happy right now. <laughs> Oh no, they're still screaming. Oh, <laughs> that conversation is amazing. Yeah, my, my skin is clear, the crops are watered, everything's thriving. The world is not shit anymore, at least for a moment. <sighs> oh my god. I feel literally so good right now. Like, so happy that it was so good. I'm so happy to see this. Ah! Also, as someone who really incredibly cares about Dave, this is very important to me. Oh, I think they they got up again. They're not sitting anymore. Were they even sitting? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, uh, me not thinking about her death self. Are you still gone? I'm still screaming. Oh, visiting Kanaya. <laughs> thinking lovingly about Nepita. The mayor just like, hello. <laughs> little, little wave. Oh, no, no, I love Oh my god, this is so good! Oh. God, I love this. Okay. <sighs> hey! Yes? Hey! 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 You said another hey. Are you going to say hey again by any chance? Hey! I knew it. Another hey. 
Tanaya, guess what? My first guess would be more, hey. But if the thing to guess is the reason you are saying at me, hey at me several times, I confess to being stumped. I got something for you. You do? What? It's the thing you got to be guessing. Is it the thing behind your back? Yep, but uh, you gotta be more specific. Is it a little piece of paper that says hey on it? I mean, that's a very good guess, can I? <laughs> no, but that would be so funny. <laughs> You're pretty funny. Um, now I want to go away and start this whole shit over so I can do that punchline instead. Maybe we should do several rehearsals first just to make sure the final performance is as funny as possible. Yes, but no. What I have for you is this! Ta da! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Kanaya is also gonna be happy, I hope. Kanaya can't believe it. Kanaya is just like, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, really? Really? This is really happening? <gasps> is it real? Yeah, I mean, as real as I could make it. Which I think means as real as the thing that it is and was always supposed to be when its ideas expressed as purely as possible through physical matter. Wow. What? It's a real alien egg. Bottom line, it took a lot of work and I guess why these soul searching, but I finally made it. It's for you. For me? Yep. Hey, now I don't know you too well. We just met. Three, it was always gonna be for you. It's like stinking useless without someone who's qualified to care for it, and that's you. Please look after the little guy. I have developed some oddly modelly feelings for a spiky fucker myself. It was like this whole quasi intellect to emotional saga or something for me to figure out how to make this freaking egg. It's a matri orb. Yeah, Dad. I can't. I don't believe this. How is it possible? I still don't know how you did this. Don't worry about it. It's just powers, magic noises. Oh yeah, that instead of it, just that the subtraction of its non-existence. Imagine a human egg. <laughs> I mean, technically, technically, human eggs are visible. Technically, they're big enough cells to be visible to the naked eye without using having to use a microscope. So. Technically, their human eggs exist. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah, morph ball size is kind of weird. <laughs> and then covered in like ears instead of horns. <laughs> but yeah. Kanaya is just like, what the fuck? Really? Is this really happening or no? Is she gonna cry? Is she gonna cry? I gotta cry as well. I gotta cry. I gotta cry. No, but cry. Thank you. Oh, she's crying. <laughs> I'm crying too. Can I be happy? Can I make me cry? No problem. I didn't think it would be this easy. I mean, not that it was easy for you by the sound of it. What I mean is I thought it was going to involve an arduous and lengthy process for myself to undertake in order to figure out how it was even possible to reconstruct the orb, let alone, let alone actually do it. Nah. Nah? Nope. So instead of all that, it's just handed to me like a nice present. Yeah. I don't know what to say. This changes so much about everything I thought I had to do. Does it? The way you see it is you shouldn't have needed to worry about making the thing. I think it will be challenging enough to like hatch it. And tending to all the stuff that comes next. Isn't it basically being responsible for the preservation of an entire race of people? Like, not even a simple kind of... Uh, not even a simple kind of people that all go about having their own babies by themselves and such. You have to set up and deal with this huge creature that does it all herself, right? Yes, that's how it works. And yes, that will be probably very challenging. Yes, yeah, just focus on that. I'm sure you will have help if you need it. I mean, after all this shit's over, obviously, 
Hey, speaking of which, how'd it go there? Uh, did it- or here, I mean. Did you do the thing? Yes, I think we did the thing. Our frog should be good to go. We? Oh, oh yeah, Karkat came too, didn't he? Where did he go? Oh, um, he's still in the cave. Um, uh, meditating. Meditating, huh? Yes. It was a very spiritually uplifting encounter with the denizen. It really, uh, blitzed our chakras. He needs some time to clear his head. <laughs> okay. The thought of Karkat meditating is kind of weird to me. I don't think he has the, the inner peace to do that. So, you're Rose's girlfriend, right? I don't know. Is that what humans call a mate spread when the mate spreads a girl? Uh, I don't know. Is a mate spread the thing trolls call each other when they are girlfriends or boyfriends with each other? Yes. Uh huh. Then, uh, the answer is yes. Yes. The mouth. Okay, it was kind of obvious. I was just making sure. Anyway, that's cool. Did you meet her on your fans fancy media wrestle? In person we met there, yes. Originally we first spoke while she was still in her session. I assisted somewhat. But I think I bugged her mostly. That seems like a lifetime ago now. So I guess you must have gotten to know each other a lot better during the trip. Yes, we had a lot of free time. I bet. Man, three years was it? That's crazy. A whole bunch of people we only just met, including humans and aliens. Or I mean trolls. Oops, sorry. It's rude. We call each other aliens all the time. <laughs> but then you all immediately have to hunker down together for three years. That is very much what happened and what we had to do. It sounds fun. I kind of wish I could have been there. I guess I have my own last long stint with people in my session, only like half a year, though. Which was cool in its own way, but it was nearly as social as your scene sounded. It was pretty social, yes. But we also had little groups who generally convened with each other more often than the entire ensemble crowded together for a single or noisy affair. Such events were pretty rare, so maybe not as social as you are picturing. In fact, it was quite a subdued situation compared to the crowd I was formerly accustomed to congregating with. Uh, we were, there were 12 of us back then. Yeah, wow. I remember hearing about that from a friend who never even existed from this frame of reference. Hmm. I guess it's another weird thing about Miles sojourn to get to this point. It is all made of memories now that didn't happen for other people. That does sound like a lonely predicament in its own particular way. A sort of sacrifice you've had to make, yes? Yeah. Sacrifice abounds, it would seem. I don't know of anyone presently alive who hasn't had to trade something very important to them in exchange for continuing to be a material seeker in this endeavor. You were forced to trade something too, but in return you've been able to do something... something so wonderful that... I guess I'm judging your accomplishment from an especially personal vantage. But no matter what else you've been through, I believe you can say you've done something as important as anyone ever hoped to do. Ah, yeah. I hope so. I really hope it all works out and you make a super successful troll world, too. Yeah, I want it to be a good place. Not so much like where I'm from. It all sounds really daunting, actually. Not even just the propagation of my kind, but managing to do it responsibly. Just causing millions of beings to exist for the sake of doing so and dismissing responsibility for the sort of people they become. That isn't good enough for me. I think Echidna was right. I will need him. Who? Oh, nobody. Let's say it was a figure of speech. I'll need everyone. Whoever is good and wishes to have a hand in the way our world is shaped. So basically not Visco. Count me in! I will, but as of the immediate point in time, I don't know what to do anymore. Hmm? Before you came, I was on my way to join you and Rose and John, feeling quite sure I was about to get ready to fight. But then you gave me this. And now I'm unsure of everything to which I just minutely permitted myself. How so? <clears throat> I want to help us win. But I also have a lot of responsibility now. In a way that is much more tangible and also spiky and round and sharp than just a few minutes ago. And I feel I have to consider risk 
to myself is now also the same as a risk to the future of my people. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. Yeah, it's like like saying I'm not a wolf being already to stand up to some other asshole of nature, like a nasty bear, and she's ready to fight and all. But also, she's got to think about what happens to her pups if she gets hurt. Yeah, something like that. Except I'd relate more to an analogy that didn't involve weird alien creatures. Uh, sure, I just imagine instead a wolf is like a mother, uh, help me out here, muscle beast. A beautiful mother muscle beast, instead of a bear, uh, it's, um, a Metroid. Let's say good enough. Damn straight. Be fucking fight off the, 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 be fucking fight of the year right there. But yeah, that concern is completely understandable. You don't gotta fight if you don't want, but I'm sure it could be used to help. <laughs> yeah, a Metroid. <laughs> A Metroid Prime. Would I actually be of much use? I think so. I look at it this way. None of this next-gen troll stuff is even going to matter if you don't win this fight. So we have to prioritize beating all these goddamn villains, especially the witch. Any extra edge is gonna help. And though I admit I don't know much about you, I'm feeling pretty confident in my assessment that you're probably some sort of sick, deadly bitch. Who told you my secret? I knew it. In fact, I would bet that you could use your concern for all your future space pops to be way extra deadly and this fray. Maybe it'd make the whole difference. The point is we need you now just as much as anyone in the future will. And we are all risking stuff and all in this together. And if you're with me and Rose and John, don't worry. We ain't gonna let anything happen to you, I promise. Dang. Eh? That was really motivational and I feel very inspired now. For you? Yes, a little corny, but definitely genuine and moving. And now I'm suddenly psyched again to go dunk a narcissistic, a narcissistic fish woman into a sea dumpster. Fuck yes! No wait, fuck yes! <laughs> Not to project myself as someone fickle or lightly swayed on big decisions. Maybe it was just a roughly 30 second spell of cold feet. And I just snapped out of it. I don't know. But you really do seem to have a way with motivational words. You must be a natural leader. I think your group was lucky to have you. Me? Nah. I'm not actually good at that at all. I mostly just yelled at my friends because they were such a gaggle for straying bozos. I guess I'm just feeling way inspired by the fact everyone is here together and we're all about to try and do something huge and important. I've also watched Sean in action a bit and he's very good at it stuff. He's actually so good at being inspiring, he's inspired me to try and be more inspiring? That sounds dumb as hell, but it's true shit. I also love how he's got no idea how good he is at literary stuff. It's, it, it's so inspirationally freaking adorable. Smile. Oh, I'm so glad Kanaya's happy. Shall we go then? We hella shall. Roxy's great. Roxy's definitely also. I mean, I, I love all the characters. Oh. So I can't really say that. I love, I mean, yeah, I don't love Briska as much as a lot of the other characters. But at this point, like, the remaining crew is just so good. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I would assume this conversation still, and then we can kind of um, stop for the day, question mark? We were having some good times here, yeah, we definitely were. Oh no, it's time. Oh no, here we go. Why are you guys saying that? I'm getting scared! <sighs> I was just having a super good time with my serotonin I got from the entire Strider conversation. I was so good. I. This is the conversation I think it is. I hate this one with passion. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh, no. Ah! Let's go. I'll be taking this if you don't mind. Not that I care if you mind. For the matter, not that there's any chance you could possibly mind what anyone does with this deadly secret weapon since you've made it perfectly clear that so your person you want to be. Which is to say, no wait, not my face. <laughs> Risk of warning, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Which is to say, someone who's dedicated her entire existence to being utterly useless. Wait. 
Which version of me are you? Are you alive? Be quiet, I'm talking. Look at you, just look at you. How completely pathetic. What? What's your problem? My problem is that you make me fucking sick. Did you know that? That it was possible for you to go so far down whatever toilet you decided to jump into. However long ago, that you could literally make your own stomach turn. I mean, my god. What are you talking about? Is it my new clothes and tattoo and stuff? Look, I, I, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember feeling that way too, all stuck about a, about certain. It's not your new look. I mean, not that it's the slightest bit flattering. In fact, I think it's perfect for you. I couldn't possibly imagine a style more impeccably suited to what a loser you've become. Loser? Hey, come on. No, hey, come on. I. Yes, loser. You're a loser. I'm sorry to be a bearer of bad news, but that is what you're now. Are you so far removed from, re from reality that you can't see it? Did this transformation happen so gradually that you just didn't notice? I find it hard to believe, and frankly, more than a little disturbing, that some version of me could let this happen to herself without being at least somewhat aware that a dreadful decline of personal integrity was getting taking place. I'm not a loser, though. I, I like who I've become. I actually feel happy and good about my life for the first time in maybe forever. Like, actually good about my life in a way that feels real instead of forced. And to realize that's what it was like for us? <laughs> you don't have a life. You're dead, remember? I'm the one with the life. And I fully intend to use it in a relevant and constructive way to help bring an end to all the horrible shit that's been going on for way too long. Remember when you used to... When you used to care about that sort of thing? <laughs> no, obviously not. All you care about now is bullshit hipstery fashion, feeling happy, and whatever the fuck it is you're doing here, frolicking with some horses in an ugly field or some shit. Just absolutely disgraceful. How could I have become so selfish? You do know this is selfish, right? This isn't having some fucking epiphany or, like, Growing as a person or whatever self-serving spin you might be putting on what's happening here. It's just plain narcissism, the worst kind you're capable of. A total renunciation of any responsibility for contributing to the greater good. And it makes me fucking sick. No, that's not what it's like. You don't understand, you haven't, like, been through... Been through what? I've been through plenty. Don't get patronizing with me. How did you die again? Aren't you being stubborn and insisting on going off to fight Jack? Even though there was... Obviously, an ill-conceived plan that was going to get everyone killed. There it is again, making it all about you, even when trying to be heroic. You let it need blind you and you did something really stupid, basically leaving no other option but for you to get killed. So since you started your journey as a ghost with that little feat of self-absorption, is it any surprise that after however many pseudo-sweeps floundering around as a lost soul, this is where you end up? A shamelessly self-indulgent punk as nobody? Wait, I, are you saying I didn't try to go fight Chag? What, what happened? How, how are you the version that's still alive? I don't... Different shit happened. And from that point on, I started making better choices unlike you. Contrary to your lazy, fakey, happy shit, I've actually grown as a person. What do you think of that, you frivolous, dithering bitch? <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, Riska, what the fuck? I mean, on the background, just like, huh? Honestly, I can barely even stand to look at you. I should really get out of here and spare myself the nausea. Hey, if I keep standing here, wait, wasting my time dishing out this evolved and served smack now. Maybe I'm paralyzed by disgust. Why are you being so mean to me? Mean? I I'm just telling it like it is, sister. It shows off no harsh. It's something you used to understand. But now you appear to be the physical embodiment of everything I detest. God, I just can't get over your shitty makeover. Ugh. Hey, did, did you did you gain weight too? What? Riska! Ah, I fucking hate you again. No. What? No. I didn't. I'm not. Yes, you did. I'm not blind, you know. I'm not fat. 
Sure, tell yourself whatever you want. Whatever lets you be at peace with your new life. <laughs> Why are you saying all this stuff to me? What did I ever do to you? I, 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 I don't understand. Holy shit. This is actually getting to you, isn't it? Unbelievable. Well, that tears it. You really are beyond any sort of redemption. Fucking incredible. Whatever happened to the, having a thick skin, letting stuff roll off your back, not letting shit get to you because you always knew you were better than the, the one slinging it. I guess this is what you call happiness now. Letting a few tiny little barbs shatter your self-esteem. You aren't happy or hilarious train wreck combined with a sad punchline. Now I'm ashamed to share an identity with you. Stop it! And then goes Riska kills the others. God damn. Oh no, she's crying. Ah, oh, don't worry, Sir Kid. I'm. No, oh, Sir Kid. I'm done here. I'm off to go do something useful like winners do. Something you wouldn't know anything about anymore. Ah, just leave me alone. How could I. How, how could I ever been so awful? Okay, this is just getting embarrassing. Time to shove off. Though. So, Truth be told, I should probably delay like killing Lord English a little longer just so he can put you out of your misery. Just go away! <laughs> I hate you! You wish is my command, loser. Can't you go get some awesome shit done and grab the reins on a relevant proactive existence? Shit, I'm feeling more adventurous and worthwhile as a person just thinking about it. Anyone who feels the same way is more than welcome to join me. Say, how about you, punky looking pixies? Does it sound like it might be the, the cut of your chip don't talk to her she doesn't even anything to do with a piece of shit like you and neither do i take your stupid trash it and you, uh, yeah take your stupid trasher and you smoke garbage about relevance and get the fuck out of here come on mina let's ditch this evil hack and go find something else to do and mina is going to join the other riska because mina was bored of riska and things are sad now Yeah, no, Mina's not gonna join. Mina also can't- Yeah, Mina is- It's still a fact that Mina is the Condess. So... Yeah. <laughs> Mina? What, what's wrong? C come on! Yeah, Riska? Um, listen. What? I, uh... Ah, uh, oh, fuck. No, I'll just say this. What is it? I think I might go, actually. What? With Riska. I mean, that one. God, this is sad. No, no, please, Mina. You can't. You can't. I just, I don't know. This, this whole thing is... Fuck. Mina, no. I'm not, like, agreeing with her and a lot of this stuff. I'm just bored. But I thought you like I did. Uh, I mean, I do. I'm just sick of sitting around, not being a part of anything. I want to go see some action, you know? I want to go kill a bad guy. Okay, yeah, I get that. Hey, me too. Look, see, I do too forget what I said. We can't go fight him together. Just not with her, okay? I couldn't handle that. It, it can't just be you and me. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know about that. The thing is... I think I'm saying here is as great as it's been, like, really great. I think this has got to be it. It? Sad face, but actually not really super sad. No, 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 no. Wait, Mi Mina, please don't do this. You heard the lady. She's made up her mind. Stay out of this. Oh, God. I know this is the risk cut that I hated in the past, but this is still painful to watch. Snip Mina, you have to stay. I don't know what the two of you are gone. I I have anyone else out here. I'll be all alone in this fucked up place. I never told you this, but but it's terrifying here. It's terrifying being dead, having to live through memories forever and dealing with the fact that nothing really means anything. It's infinite and dark, and it's all being ripped apart, and you're the only one who ever made me feel good about being here. You're the only one who made me feel good about being anywhere. Please, don't, Mina. <sighs> Riska, damn. I, uh, it's a 
it's just so hard. I don't even mind. This is like the hardest shit I ever did. I can't even fully explain. It's just, uh, I think it's got gotta be. But but it doesn't. You you don't have to do this. I think on that point we're just gonna have to all gay to this all gay. I cannot believe you're doing the fish pun thing while you're breaking up with me. Sorry, sir. Is the way I'm a peeps. Feeling bad for Riska, also hating Riska. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't think any of it changes from me. It was true. I like it a lot and all, but like, she has a one-on-one -on -one thing, which is you change a lot. No better or worse or anything, I qualified to make that all just different. From the way you were then when we met, happier, I guess. No, man, if you say so, then yeah, I'll well, see if there is somebody who probably turned like vulnerable as shell. And uh, it's scary to me because of the way I am, I don't think I'm really the sort of person to be trusted with those kinds of feelings. See, the problem is you don't actually know me very well, and nobody does, and the main thing about me is um, uh, that I gotta account for, or I guess I couldn't account for on behalf of the feelings of people I want to see get hurt. It's, uh, how do I say this? Uh, what you need to know is like, hmm. I'm... Bad. No, Mina, I don't care if you're bad. I mean, I don't even think that's true, but I don't care if it is. Please don't do this. Don't go, at least not right away. Can't you stay a little longer so we can talk about this? <sighs> Sorry, Riska. I... Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god! Ah, just earlier today while I was vacuuming and thinking about Homestuck, I was like, oh man, Briska kind of turned to like a sort of acceptable character. And now this. Mm, why is she like this? Why is she like this? Bruh! Exactly. Bruh. <laughs> Like, holy shit. Bruh, bitch. Time to say goodbye, Mina. I just did. Let's just get out of here, okay? You got it. God. Can you can you imagine, like, having this with sound? Like, it's actually animated with voice actors. And then you just can't hear sobbing Riska in the background. Just, like, crying her, like, dead like little heart out and then there's this fucking psychopath in the foreground just like grinning into the fucking camera like the the, the sociopath that she is holy shit Riska is, is a well written villain like sort of character but oh my fucking god like interpersonally she, she is so important for like plot things but her interpersonal things are so Mind-blowingly aggravating. At least Mina feels a bit bad about it. Yeah, she she does. She realizes she is bad. And I mean this I think in like, you know, this dream bubble space in the, the, the dead zone. I'm just gonna call it dead zone. This is where uh this is what relationships are basically doomed to anyway because the, the, like all the other ones the other ancestors that we met they all like kind of tried or <laughs> i mean roof you tried to get out of the one with um with Ecrius's ancestor and stuff but yeah i don't think relationships can really last in this space because they're forever so yeah it just gets boring after a while and mina just doesn't yeah she's just not the type for like things settling down that's our risk, Attila did, Liddy. Yeah, basically. Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just read this. Yeah. You got the right choice, Pikesies. Riska grew out of all the things that Mina liked about her, yeah. She got better. Oh, no, she's crying too, huh? Now let's go round up that army. Oh no. <laughs> I know this hurts. Uh, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts me. Ah. <laughs> God. 
Okay. Um, is this a good point to stop and say things for a last stream? Or should I go a little further? Because I f wouldn't mind stopping here. It was supposed to be a short stream. Let's try this choice thing again. One more time. This time only with two choices. Nice and easy. I would read this and then stop. Okay. Then let's do that. Uh, let's try this choice in the middle. Hey, it works like a charm. Two sweet, simple choices for two sweet, simple kids. There you go. One last gluttonous chump at the free will pie before you all say goodbye. Don't say this website never did anything for you. Don't you dare. Had to step away to fix the printer. I mean, <laughs> you know the conversation, but still, oh my god. <sighs> okay, choose your characters. I'm boring. I go from left to right. This website. <laughs> there you are. I have been looking forward to meeting you, dear. You have? Who are you? I'm you, but most know me as John's Nana. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. He told me about you. Gosh, pleased to meet you, N Nana. I guess I should call you. Suits me. Yeah, time for a much healthier self interaction. I'm gonna have to look, like, honestly, I'm gonna have to look at the, um, the, the hug again later <laughs> just to get over this bullshit now that I'm feeling again. <sighs> oh, you just meant, meant the page. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I also understood it, like, uh, reading their paths, but. If this is where it's good to stop, then I will do that. Since I... Oh, it's so warm. Stop after this convo? Okay, since we started. Let's do this convo and then it's done for the day. Okay. Uh, why is that? Blah, blah, blah. Mm, pleased to meet you, Nana. I guess I should call you. Suits me? Calling you Jane might feel a bit strange. Also, perhaps disrespectful? And why is that? It is my name, after all. Yes, but... You are my senior by many decades, I gather. You have so many more years of life experience and wisdom in you. You seem to be dressed like a clown. Mm. <laughs> Bakhtif smile. Not to disparage your fanciful attire, I quite like it. I just mean that you've been through more than I can imagine. I couldn't call you by my name. I would be feel wrong and flippant to treat you like my equal. But really, Jane, the honor of meeting you is all mine. I have been looking forward to it so much since I learned of your existence. Ever since I spent uh, I spent that one day helping John through his session, there haven't been many reasons for me to feel particularly worthwhile. Yes, I tended to him and his sister for several years, spiked for them, then the sympathetic ear when needed. But in a way, it's been a lonely life for me since my ashes fell into silly old sprites. I've been strictly an auxiliary actor there, only to serve others, even during my greatest moments to shine. So when I heard of you, a version of myself who was a true hero, so young, empowered, and set to embark upon a life filled with consequential deeds. I was absolutely giddy. I knew we had that we had to meet. Uh, oh my, you, you really feel that way about me? Yes, Jane. I do not mean to suggest I regret the way my life has gone, of course. I lived a very humble life, as free of intrigue and adventure as possible by choice. By choice. Y you see, I grew up in a dangerous circumstance, as I knew how cruel the woman who raised me could be, and what she might do to me or the people I loved if I made waves or demonstrated any sense of defiance. So I lived simply, I started a family, and operated a quiet joke shop. But I always knew trouble was brewing, they were the best years of my life. Yet I always had a little more knowledge than I ever let on, and used my understanding in subtle ways to help those who whom the torch would be passed in this great fight. But then I made the transition from knowing some things in life to knowing a great deal more in depth. Being resurrected as a sprite endowed me with a very deep knowledge of the game and its broader circumstances. I was in peak form, a true Harlequin wise woman, and there was nary a question I couldn't answer. And then the dear kids scratched their session and cast themselves into the unknown. Into the unknown! <laughs> I ventured with them, and so I too lost my bearing on the nature of what lay ahead. I went from my prime, a state of all understanding, to a state of absolute uncertainty. For the first time in about as long as I could remember, I had no idea what to expect next. 
It was quite freeing in a way. I had a wonderful three years in that ship with these lovely children. I thought little of what challenges were ahead, but when I did, my thoughts would always drift toward you, Chain. Thinking about you and this adventure you were about to begin, it made me feel like a child again. It gave me the feelings I used to have for the limitless potential of life. Before my stepmother snuffed them out and confronting me with the reality, that life would have to take a considerably more limited shape if I wished to survive. So, when I look at you now, I see the potential I had as a child finally being realized. But in a much more special way than I ever would have imagined back then. It makes me so proud to see you as a heroic young woman, ready to make a difference and forge your own destiny. I just wanted to tell you this before you go off to battle. Oh, oh jeez. Nana, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much for those inspirational words. <laughs> I think Chan was really lucky to have you as a sprite, not to mention a grandmother, of course. Of course. It's no wonder he appears to have his act together. Maybe I would have been better off if I had someone like you to advise me from the start to all of all this. Maybe I wouldn't have felt so lost. It's normal to feel lost, though. And believe me, needing to find your own way in time will make you a lot wiser than having an old lady around to spoon-feed you all the answers. In any case, you have me now. I think it's been quite a long time since Chon was needing my guidance. The boy's grown so much since he clobbered me with a choke book on that fateful day. From now on, I'd be pleased if you would consider me your sprite. <gasps> wow! Oh, oh my goodness, yes, please! In fact, I heard from the cat girl that you and she are on a healing duty in this spectacular fray coming up. It so happens that healing is my specialty. Next to baking, of course, and to pranks. Why don't I assist? That would be great too. Oh, and Jane, one more thing, just so you know. There are actually two of me. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hitting her so hard in the face. <laughs> Fucking shoes fly off. <laughs> Holy shit. Good thing she's a bot here, huh? Well, it's like the risker. <laughs> okay, the conversation wasn't long. <laughs> You got pied on the face! Banana! Holy shit! <sighs> Another sprite came along with John. <laughs> oh yeah! Interesting. Two nano sprites. I mean, the more the better. The, a good pie ending. The cake was not a lie this time. Yay! Either way, um, so that's gonna be it for today. Crazy. I know, I know, I know, I know. We keep saying it, but. It's not going to end when I'm done, but it still feels weird to get there. It still does feel so weird. <sighs> but oh my god, I think that the, that Dave Dirk conversation actually healed a part of me today. That was a really good conversation, and I love that. I love that ending. It was so good. But yeah, um, it's as I said at the beginning of the stream, I. I plan to either finish Homestuck this weekend on Saturday or next weekend on Saturday. It really depends on um, my shift. Should I happen to have next Saturday off, I would prefer doing uh, it then. Because, just because, you know, I don't have to talk beforehand a lot. <laughs> so it would be better for my voice. So if I happen to have next Saturday off, I will do it then. If I work on both Saturdays, I'm just gonna do it this week. So yeah, it, it really depends <clears throat> on my shift. So I will keep you updated on Twitter if I don't forget it. Shame on me. It happens sometimes, sadly, that I just simply forget to post on Twitter. But I really try since it's gonna be the, 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 the finale, most likely, I believe. Uh, that I will keep you informed about uh, when exactly I will stream. I, I will know my shift on Wednesday and then I will post it on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and so yeah, so y'all don't miss it or whatever. Either way, uh, I'm gonna end the stream here. Um, I have to look at that Strider hog one more time and then I will just freaking pass out. Yeah, ex exactly. Don't forget to post the things. 
and to the document let me let me see all the good shit that i missed in the fandom times but yeah um i'll try to stay cool same to y'all i hope you're comfortable where you're at because this heat wave is oof it's just big oof you know what i mean who knows i missed a oh, tiny yeah today was just a very short stream but I will be back either next Saturday, uh, like this week Saturday or next Saturday. I will post it on Twitter as soon as I know. But yeah, it's, it's that there's gonna be more streams in the future. I, even if I don't have Homestuck, it's not gonna be over. I still have a lot of shit I want to stream in the future. So yeah, <laughs> put a few videos in there. Thank you very much. I haven't looked at the list yet, but I'm really looking forward to whatever is like coming together. And yeah, after I'm done with Homestuck, I'm also going to do a separate stream just, you know, talking about it. Maybe, I don't know yet. It really depends on how long that list is going to be. I'm either going to uh, connect that to the wrap-up stream and uh, or I'm just going to draw during like wrapping up and like talking about the entirety of Homestuck. Ow, I just hit my hand on my keyboard. <sighs> anyway, y'all. Thanks so much again for watching, for hanging out, and uh, as I said, I'll keep you posted about when the next stream is going to happen. But until then, have a great rest of the day night, whatever time it is where you're at. And I will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.